Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're working on a PC with our shop dog Queenie. This PC is an older HP Pro Desk I'm building for my granddaughter since she has a habit of taking over our PCs when she wants to watch something like Baby Shark. As you can see from the product sticker, this is an HP Pro Desk 405 G1 MT and not the Core i5 version either. This one has an AMD A4 5000 APU. Here we can see the system board and the passive heat sink. Looking at the APU, you can see it's a mobile chip soldered directly to the motherboard. We do have two DDR3 RAM slots in single channel mode, two SATA ports, USB 3 header, and a PCI Express 16 slot that we're going to use to test this out in another video. Looking inside the case, you can tell this is a pretty grungy PC that, believe it or not, this came from an office environment and not an industrial environment as it, as it appears. At this point, I decided to tear the case down for powder coat and found out just how cheaply this PC was made. Alright, so drilling out all the rivets, I got the outer shell off, and if you look at this part here, this has got to be the thinnest fucking metal I've ever seen on a case in my life. And these parts aren't even riveted together. Looks like they're punched through and crimped. So, not sure how this is going to work out here. I'm going to have to drill those crimps out so I can take the rest of this apart and hopefully get everything powder coated with no problem. With everything hooked up, we can see the motherboard and other components function, so it's time to do some more testing. So here you can see I added a fan to the heatsink just for testing. This cooler does better in a case with a rear case fan pulling air across it as opposed to standing in open air like we have here. With no fan, installing drivers drove the peak CPU temperature up to 68, but with the fan running, running R15, we're sitting at 38. So it does make a difference. This is the actual finished PC ready for my granddaughter. You can tell it's for a little girl being all nice and pink, and while she won't actually be using it, she will still see it, and it only needs to be able to run YouTube and Netflix, which it does quite well. The main structure of the PC was powder coated white, with the exterior a pink color, and the gray plastic in the front was painted white. This is a side by side comparison of the original next to the powder coated one, and it's a drastic difference. In this view from the rear, the one on the left you can see has a smashed DVI port, so we're going to use that later on to test the CPU with a dedicated GPU. The A4 5000 that is installed is a Kabini CPU with four Jaguar cores at 1.5 GHz, 2 MB of L2 cache running on less than 1 volt of vCore with a TDP of only 15 watts. I have 8GB of DDR3 1866 installed, but the board runs it at 1333 with pretty shit timings and there's no way to change that. The GPU portion is uh, AMD Radeon HD 8330, uh, 4 GCN cores clocked pretty low, so uh, I'm really not going to expect a whole lot out of it. Starting off with Cinebench R15, it's a little slow going, but it's chugging along. And in the end, we get a multi-core score of 121, with a single core score of 33. Let's move on to some game footage, and you can judge for yourself the performance of this little APU. All units, this is Sergeant Kelly. We're under attack by an unknown enemy force. Fall back to Marine HQ to regroup. I say again, fall back to
Like nobody's home. Before we hit the surface, put your gas mask on. Without it, it'd be like a goldfish outside the pool. The name is there. This is the Torelli of Performance. We spotted KPA patrols down on the beach. Use your binocs to tag them before they're running blind. I see a large transmitting array. That must be the jamming station. Some things we should talk about. That's all right. Did you know there As expected, the performance wasn't great. It struggled with most games, but it did okay with much older games such as Tomb Raider Anniversary, Fallout 3, and Doom 3. I did try to run Doom 2016, and at 720p lowest settings, it was a single-digit nightmare, and Vulcan just loaded to a black screen. Rise of the Tomb Raider took forever to load, only to have horrible frame rates as well. GTA 5 actually loaded and ran, but was completely unplayable at 720p with the lowest settings selected. But, as I said, it really just needs to run YouTube and Netflix, which it does quite well, so it will definitely serve its purpose. We'll have to really test it out with a dedicated GPU in the near future. Alright guys, well, I hope someone found this interesting. It's always fun to check out budget hardware and see what it can do. You guys take care, and I will see you on the next one.